Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And just yesterday, Unreal Fest 2020 Online just wound down. And one of the things that came about it is we now have access to the long-promised Blender tools, at least in an early form. And these are tools that make it so that working with Unreal Engine and Blender are an easier process. So that's what we're going to look at today. Now, the first thing we've got to get into is, okay, how do I install these things? And you're going to start with the easier question of how do I get access to these things? Because the thing is, they are in a private repository. Right now, you have to sign up and link your GitHub account to your Unreal Engine account. Now, if you've been with Unreal Engine or you've ever built it from source code, you've already done this process. But if not, uh, the instructions are available here. I'm not really going to go through them, uh, but they are step by step on how to hook up your GitHub account to your Unreal Engine account. I will link that in the linked article down below. But once you have done that, when you go and look at the Epic Games um, GitHub repository, you will find there is a Blender Tools private repository. And obviously, that is the one that we are interested in. Go ahead and click into that. Of course, I will link that as well. By the way, if you do not have your GitHub account linked or you are not logged into GitHub at the time, you're just going to get a 404 error when you click that link. So what we're going to notice here is we've got two sets of Blender add-ons. UE to Rigify, which allows you to basically take Unreal Engine rigs and convert them into Blender Rigify rigs. We're not going to be dealing with that one today. Instead, we are going to deal with Send to Unreal. This is the tool for basically exporting models, animated tools, etc., all the way out from Blender and into Unreal Engine. So let's start there. First thing you're going to need to do, of course, is go ahead and go to the Send to Unreal download. You want to grab this zip file right here and just download it. So it's going to bring down that zip. So send to uh, UE underscore and then the version. Uh, you want to go ahead and grab that guy. Once that is done, fire up your trusty blender of choice. Uh, here is mine. This is sort of what we are going to create today. Nothing too, too exciting. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to do a new project from scratch. Uh, yeah, I'll leave that in there. So what we're going to have to do is come into edit and then preferences, and then just going to go ahead and do an install and then find that zip file you just downloaded. So it's right... Uh, where is it? S, send, send, send. There it is. Pick one of those. Go ahead and install it. Once it is installed, you can find it here in the list. Go to send, and you're going to find pipeline, send to Unreal. Make sure that that is enabled. You're going to also notice there's a checkbox here for always use Unreal scene scale. This is a bit of a contentious issue. Basically, you need to work at 0.01 scale in your scene. And my experiences is this is pretty crashy so i'm going to show you how to set this up yourself in unreal engine and it's really only relevant when you're exporting animation so if you're just exporting static meshes doesn't matter at all but it's when you're exporting uh rigged animated things you need to have this configured all right so we are now in they are enabled and set up if you like what you've got you can save your preferences permanently so you don't have to keep doing this and we are ready to work with unreal engine you're going to notice this minute you have that installed you've got a section of categories here you've got your mesh your rig and your your extras. And now we're going to go ahead and set things up from this end. So uh, I'm going to show you how to set that scene scale. Go here to the scene properties, go to units, and you change this guy out to from 1.0 to 0 0.01. And then you're going to be basically organizing things into how they are exported. So for example, we want to export out this cube. Cube goes into the mesh category. Uh, we're also going to be creating an armature for it. Uh, but let's, let's modify our mesh slightly. So I'm going to go ahead here. We'll switch to uh, face mode grab this guy here we'll just extrude 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 we'll switch here to edge mode alt click and then shift click i'm just going to grab each corner here just so we got a little bit of definition i'm not going to accidentally create a phallic member like i always end up accidentally doing control edge we'll bevel bevel that in a bit all right there we go so there is the object that we are going to work with nice and shiny now i'm going to take that guy uh let's grab all the faces again we'll go to uv unwrap and we'll just do a cube projection on this. All right, so make sure all the faces are selected this time. Cube project. Okay, so now we've got it ready to go. We can apply a texture to this guy just to show that textures actually work. Uh, I created a simple just UV grid texture in the past. So I'm gonna go in here. Uh, let's go to UV edit, nope, not UV editing, uh, shading. So here we are in the shader. We'll go ahead and we'll add in a texture node, add in whatever texture maps you obviously want to at this point. So I'm gonna add an image texture in here. And let's open that up. I think I dumped this guy in my temp folder. Color grid. There we go. So just a standard color grid texture. We will dump that into the base color thing there. And there you go. So there is the texture we are working with. So we now have a textured object that we can export out. And you see we're using nodes here and it will pick it up. I do find though sometimes if it is not an actual file, if it's just in memory, it doesn't export right. So that's one of those experiences you're definitely going to want to check with. So we got that. Now we're going to go back here to the layout view. And we're going to... Um, oops. I don't have emulate on. 
Oh, that's annoying. All right, so let's just turn those back on. All right, so let me just do one thing really quickly. Edit preferences, input, emulate number pad. All right, so I don't do that again. Let's switch to side mode like so. We'll switch Z and go into X-ray like this. And now what we're going to do in object mode is add a armature. So armature select here. There we go. So G, let's move that guy down a little bit. We'll hit into edit mode. We'll hit E for extrude. We'll create another bone, create another bone, and create another bone. So now we have a bone inside of our guy here. Let's go back into object mode, grab the outer shape, and then shift click to grab the inner one. Hit control P to parent, and we will do it with automatic weight. So now we can now go ahead and animate this guy and have it work. Now you're going to notice we have an armature here what we want to do is dump that into the rig category actually it did it automatically hey so if it doesn't do that automatically make sure that it gets dumped into rig so that it is there so you got your cube is under mesh rig the armature is underneath it so we are good to go now uh, so let's go select uh, our shape here we want to switch into animation mode and we want to switch into the action editor like so we're going to be creating a new animation here let's go, go back to the wireframe view Grab the first guy here, make sure you are in pose mode, and let's just grab all the keys, hit I to do a keyframe, and we're just gonna be doing rotation. So there we go, we got our start. We're gonna call this guy Bend. So we're creating a bend animation. You can create multiple animations, by the way. We're just gonna make this guy 20 frames long. All right, so there we go. At the 10th frame mark, let's move forward 10 frames-ish. All right, so now let's just grab a couple of these guys. We'll do a bit of a rotate, rotate, rotate. Grab them all, hit I and set a rotation key. Now we'll go to the 20 mark. Again, hit rotate, hit rotate, hit rotate. Grab them all, I create a key for rotation. All right, so we now have a bend animation. Let's go ahead and play it. There you can see, lovely stuff. All right, so that is what we are going to try and export out to Unreal. So now we gotta go over and create our project. All right, so now we are over on the Unreal Engine side. I just created a brand new project in Unreal Engine 4.25. You got to use 4.25 or newer. And then we got to do a little bit of setup here. Nothing too special, but one of these is going to require a reboot. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go into Edit, uh, Projects. Actually, we'll come back to that one. Edit, Plugins. And what we want to do is enable the Python plugin. So go Python. Go ahead, set that to Enabled. And then, yep, yep. And then here you're going to notice, yeah, I need to go ahead and restart. So we'll let it do that. And they'll fire it back up. We got one more setting to make, and then we are ready for the fun. All right, so we'll close that down. We are good there. So edit, and then go to editor preferences. Come up here, search for the words CP and U, and less CPU when in background. We want to turn that off because we're going to have importing going on in the background, and now we are good to go. So Actually, sorry, that is a small bit of a lie. There is one more thing to do. We go in here into edit. Uh, we go to project settings and we search for the words Pi and Thon. And we want to enable remote execution. This is what's going to allow Blender to talk to Unreal Engine. With that done, no more reboots required though. We are good to go. So we're going to head on back over here to our project. Da, 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 so you can see it. Looking all nice and shiny and animated. We're just going to go up here, notice the pipeline category, go to export, and then send to Unreal. And hopefully, no error messages pop up. Da, 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 da. Good, no error messages popped up. So what this should have done is automatically sent it over. So imported bone transform is different from original, output log, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, so we're going to clear that out. So here we got the untitled category, open that up, untitled asset. Open that up, and here you're going to see everything we just sent over. So here is our textured cube, uh, looking very, very small. So I do not get these scale requirements, but it is in fact there. So let's bring that in here. So let's go here, scale that up 100 fold, 100 fold, 100 fold. There is our object, looking really nice. We come down here, you're also gonna see it made a skeleton for us, a physics asset. The material was defined and set up for us with textures and so on. Let me just get out of that. And then finally, you'll notice here we have a category for animations. And inside each one, there you go. There is our blend animation as we defined it. Ta-da! So that is basically that. Uh, again, I would tell you to go ahead and set up. So we're going to head on back over here. I'm going to show you a couple more settings. So the big thing is that 0 0.01 uh, scaling thing. I did it at the scene level. It is kind of glitchy, and it's not to the ideal way of doing things. I want to show you something, though. So there's this edit, and then there's preferences. Once again, we come back here. We go to the send 
send to Unreal category right here. There is this setting here to automatically use Unreal Scene Scale. The reason why I'm not demonstrating that in this video is for me, Every single time I turn this on, the second I copy that armature into the armatures tab over here, so if I drag my armature into the rig category here, boom, it explodes, blows up Blender every single time. So uh, that is why I set it manually. Hopefully you can get away with it on your own. Basically, all you should have to do, you shouldn't have to come into the scene like I did and change that. You should just be able to go into the preferences category and just toggle this box right here. Now, another thing to notice while we're here, as we've got some settings here for path. So you notice when it came into um, Unreal Engine, yeah, let me show it to close down this animation. It came in under un um, Untitled Category, Untitled Asset. Obviously, you probably don't want to go with that naming convention. Those are set right here. So your game folder, Untitled Category, Untitled Asset. So obviously, if you want to change that up, you can change the names right here. Uh, we've also got a couple more instructions basically on what to import. We can have it do LODs if we so wish. Uh, got some validation checks, and we've got some export options available right here. Um, there is another scaling setting here for FBX. So if you kind of can't get it to work, if, or if you're like me, you get crashes every time you handle with that Unreal Scale thing, that is another option you've got there. Now, i got to find the entire Unreal Scale thing is a little bit annoying, and that's one of those things that uh, the mannequin people, um, oh, what's it called? Here we go. Mr. Mannequin's tools. Uh, he is actually, this should have replaced his requirements, but it was at 0.01 scale requirement. It breaks something in Blender. So he is going to be continuing to update his asset, at least until that changes. So there's a little bit of unfortunateness there, but for the most part, you can get your assets over and you're seeing right here, that is a animated asset inside of Blender and one click export. And then here it is, once again, get the animation going. You have exactly what you are working with. You just gotta mess around with that scale part of things. Again, the other part of this that I'm not showcasing in this particular video is there is the tools as well for uh, right here. Let's go on back. Uh, so Blender tools. There is also, let me find it here, the other one is the UE to rigify uh, tool here. Uh, this one is for creating U, uh, Unreal Engine rigs in uh, Blender. It's kind of going in the opposite process. So if you want to bring your Unreal project into Blender to work with and edit and work on, it requires the rigify asset. Uh, it's not something I'm going to be dealing with in this particular video. I think for the majority of my viewers, it is the send to Unreal uh, tooling that people are going to most appreciate. Now, the entertaining thing is while I did this video, there was a commit. So anything that you're talking about, you're seeing in terms of bugs and such, this is very actively being worked on. So uh, 12 minutes ago, somebody did something. So hopefully some of those issues are being resolved as we go. And hopefully that 0.01 .01 scale uh, stuff is resolved and there's a better solution to it. But right now you can get, you know, from here to here in a very short period of time. At the same time, if you want, at any particular time, you can come in here, uh, you can delete the content and re-export it. I also found a little bit problematic, but if you do something like change out the texture here, uh, if it's an actual file behind it, you can do a re-import and your changes will be brought back in on the fly. Um, I have found it a couple times. A few of the things I did didn't make it over, and my best bet then was to actually just basically take everything, delete it, force a delete on that one and then head back over here and basically just do my export again. So if you run into some glitchiness or some weirdness and things aren't necessarily updating right, uh, just, you know, do the nuke, nuke from orbit kind of approach to things and it works just fine. So except for when your uh, animations broke it. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that is that. Uh, the Unreal Engine tools for Blender definitely makes working with Blender and Unreal Engine a nicer process. Uh, a few more things to work out there, but they are available. So once again, you do need to register your GitHub account to link to the Unreal Engine account, and I will link the documentation you need to do that down below. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.